Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Donald Burns, executive career coach, and you know the drill here at Resume Police. Every episode, I take a bad resume and I show you how I would transform it into something much better. Actually, the resume I'm about to show you is not that bad. It's not horrible, but it's not competitive. It's not strong enough to consistently beat out competitors for an interview. Most resumes are like that. They're not horrible, but they're not good enough. If you have talent, but nobody is paying attention to you, this video will help. If you have real career assets, but you're not getting interviews, then the problem is probably your packaging. It's probably your resume. Your resume might be killing you and you don't even know it. This makeover was originally published on March 31, 2014 at www.cio.com. See it under careers. Focus of this makeover is resume branding, but actually it covers a lot of problems that might be holding you back. The owner of this resume, Florence, is an IT audit manager with the Beers, the world's largest diamond company. I love that she works for a diamond company because the analogy is perfect. Her career, her old resume, was a diamond in the rough. Nothing stood out, but we fixed that. So now, when people see her new resume, they ask, how could any company not want to interview this woman? And that's what a branded resume will do for you. So let's start with a quick look at the old resume. By the way, this person lives and works in South Africa. So some of these items or their ordering are different from North America. So let's take a closer look. Here on page one, she lists her personal details, education, achievements, and workshops, core competencies. Here's the problem. You've only got about six seconds on average to wow the reader. And that six seconds is for the whole resume. In my opinion, you've only got three seconds to wow the reader. That's because the decision to accept or trash the resume is made right up here at the very top of the first page. So none of this stuff she's showing on page one answers the key questions shown here and read. What do you do? What do you want? And most important of all, what makes you any better than all these other stooges who want to work here? At this point, nobody even cares what your name is. So if you lead off with your personal details and core competencies, your resume will probably be trashed. And if you blow this intro, it's game over. Nothing else matters down below, and certainly nothing else matters on pages two or three. If you blow the intro, your resume will probably be trashed. Her second page is just more of the same. She talks about details that she thinks are important. Problem is that the interviewer is not interested in what she's talking about. I'll get into that in a minute. These bullets are a problem. The text is too dense, and it's a jigsaw puzzle. In other words, she's showing a bunch of little puzzle pieces that do not make sense to an outsider. Instead, she should assemble these pieces into a clear picture. In other words, show a success story. That's how you open the door for an interview. And by the way, I explained this bullet problem in a separate video on the blog. Here's a third page. Forget it. Just more of the same. Blah, blah, blah. Almost always, a third page of a resume is a wasteland. In certain parts of the world, South Africa and Australia, for example, longer resumes are customary. Even in the USA, it's okay to have a third page, but usually it's a bad idea. A third page will not help you open the door for an interview. That decision was already made at the top of page one. Okay, here we are on page one of the new resume. And by the way, the photo is optional. It's okay for South Africa, not for the USA on a resume. I like the photo because it makes the resume more memorable. Now, compare her new intro with her original. The new intro takes charge of the communication in the first millisecond. Number one, the headline. This is not the title of her current job. This is an aspirational headline that points to where she's going in her career. These are subheadings. The resume is making big claims. We're saying she's had a distinguished nine-year career with the Beers. For example, she's won Auditor of the Year. She has dual expertise, an MBA and a BS in computer science, and she speaks several languages. Number three, this short summary starts with a bang. Based on what she told me in the interview, we can call her a master auditor. Number four, these three bullets, expertise, leadership, performance. Each of these bullets is backed up with a credible, short, and very specific example. Number five, education. These are good schools, so put them on the first page, but 
the older you get, the less important the education, unless you've gone to a very exceptional school, a Harvard MBA or Oxford. So based on that intro, how could any company not want to interview her? That's the key idea. She sold on the first half of the first page. By the way, this first page, you can save it as a standalone one page PDF and use it as a networking bio. Very flexible for networking. How cool is that? Question about the intro. Is she telling the truth or is she just blowing smoke. Where's the proof? That's the purpose of everything below the top half and page two. Everything below that green line and everything on the second page must back up the claim she's making at the very top. The reverse is also true. If you're not sold at the very top, it's unlikely you'll ever be sold on page two or three. If you blow this intro, your resume will probably be trash. These elements I described, number one through five, these are often called branding elements. For resume purposes, most of the branding happens right here. Plus another element I call the golden thread, and that is the topic of a separate video. Okay, page two backs up the top half of the first page. Here I've stacked the title so the reader sees her progression. Promotions. She's worked for this company for nine years, so it's very important to show promotion. Otherwise, looks like she's been doing the same thing for nine years. For each of her roles, I've called out the strongest item and put it in a subhead. For example, promoted to audit manager, first IT maturity audit, order of the year for 2012, discovered something important. You get the idea. By the way, all this sounds very impressive now, but hardly any of this information appeared on her original resume. All of her strongest material was locked up inside her head. And, in my experience, the only way to unlock that information is with an in-depth interview. We talked for about two hours, recorded the whole session. That's the secret of a killer resume. It's not the font. It's not the format. It's the interview. Here's the third page. Okay, if it makes you feel better, a third page is okay. But it doesn't change anything. The big decision was already made at the top of page one. Well, that's all for now. I hope this has been helpful, and I do wish you the very best of good luck in your search.